Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time, we explored more Pterodactyl Land and defeated the boss of this world, Terry. And after doing so, he asked us to go ahead and help him out. We need to go ahead and find all of his eggs and hatch him before he goes instinct. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And we'll start with that egg over there across the water. But in order to actually reach that egg, we need to go ahead and split up. So the closest split up pads are over on the other side of Pterodactyl Land here. So let's just go ahead and make our way over to those said pads. And before we actually go over there, because in order to actually get over to that little ledge, we do need to fly, which conveniently for us, Terry did open up the flight pad here of Pterodactyl Land. So we can go ahead and use that flight pad to fly over to where that egg is located. But before we actually get that egg, I want to go ahead and use that flight pad for something else. So I'm going to go ahead and swap my eggs around because I only really just need a standard egg. Jump over to my spring shoes here and use these to get to the flight pad. And since we're Kazooie, those spring shoes send us really, really high. So it doesn't really matter where you jump using the spring shoes with Kazooie alone because you can easily make the jump to get over to where the flight pad is. So here next to the world entrance, I'm going to go ahead and just turn around and aim at this pillar here. Because as you can see, it has a switch for us to go ahead and hit. I'm actually going to go ahead and just make this a little bit easier myself at this point. Swap to grenade eggs. So using a grenade egg, just going to go ahead and shoot that switch. Barely hit it there, but as you can see, hitting the switch reveals a Jinjo. So I'm going to go ahead and just fly into this little hole here and just grab this guy. Going to see if I can grab him while staying in my flight mode. Apparently I couldn't do that. It's a little hard to grab this guy and continue flying. It is possible to do, but I wasn't able to do it, unfortunately. I know that entire section must have been disorienting to watch, so I do apologize for that. But unfortunately, there's no easy way to really fly like that without having some weird camera manipulation like that. So it's going to be a little hard to see. Let's go ahead and fly back over to where that egg is. So go back into our first person mode here. And now let's just go ahead and use our little beak bust attack here to fly as fast as we can over the egg and land right next to it. Now it's time to hatch the egg. Take a nice little seat there, Kazooie. That's one of my precious babies. Aw, isn't it cute? Those wings are very tiny. I'm surprised those things can fly with those tiny wings. I'm very surprised they can fly without even being out of eggs for more than five seconds. They just know how to fly already. But the fact that they can fly the second they're born with wings of that size, that's just impressive. You gotta give it to those little kids. They definitely know how to fly. So, that's pretty much it for this area. That's the only egg in this ground floor. So, now it's time for us to go ahead and get higher up on this mountain. So we'll just go ahead and use the flight pad to do that. So coming back over in this area, flying just a little bit up here. And let's just go ahead and land in this area because actually I don't really need to go too far for this next egg. Luckily for me, the next egg is actually in this cave. So coming into here is a nice pair of spring shoes. Definitely want this. Sorry, not coming in wearing silly shoes. Yeah, it just kind of kicks you out. I just wanted to show that little detail. I do want to actually go in that cave, but not with the shoes on because, as you can see, that doesn't really amount to anything. And I figured, you know, instead of walking all the way down to the very bottom, I might as well just show off, hey, if you use your shoes, look what happens. It's a little weird. So, there you go. Don't go in the cave with the shoes, but we do actually want to come in here because, if you remember, very early on when we first entered this world, we found an egg, and I told you guys, remember where that egg is, because we'll be able to do something with it later. Now's the time for us to interact with that egg, so make a way into Ugga Bugga's cave here, and let's go ahead and make a way over to the split up pads. And now, split up and swap to Kazooie. Now that we know the hatch move, and Terry has activated these eggs, because you can't actually hatch these eggs until you fight Terry, we can come into this little cave, and go ahead and hatch our third egg. That's why my precious babies! Isn't it cute? Just like my other two? Good luck trying to fly out of this little narrow cave. It's not going to be easy for you to fly out of here. So, 
Let's go ahead and combine the two and get out of here. At this point, you know what, let's just go out this way. It doesn't really matter where we go, if you want to be honest, because our final egg is at the very top of the mountain. So, I want to find me a split-up pad so I can actually get there easily. So, it doesn't matter which way we go. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the warp pad that's right next to uh, Wubba's wigwam here. That would be an easy way to get back to the very top of the mountain. So, let's go ahead and warp back up to the top. We could go to the stomping grounds, which would also be a good way to get up here, but I don't recommend it. Just use the warp that's right next to Terry. The one that's at the stomping grounds has you doing a lot of extra work just to get back over to Terry's nest, so it's, it's not really worth it. You could do it, I just don't know why you would use that warp. So we could have actually came into this cave right when we fought Terry, but I decided against it simply just because, well, we would be coming back here later. And I might as well come this way because split up pads. Let me know the drill, separate the two, use Kazooie. But as you can see, this area is a little hard for us to reach. There is an egg up there, but we can't climb this vine as Kazooie. So we gotta drop all the way down and fly all the way back up. It's a little stupid, if you wanna be honest. Has someone been repairing holes in her nest recently? That's a little hint about the jiggy that's right underneath Terry's nest. Which we already have, so luckily we don't need to worry about the hint. Now let me see, where am I in relation to the flight pad? I'm nowhere near it, okay. I didn't drop at a good spot, but that's not too big of a deal. I could just easily jump out of the water like I'm doing here and just kind of flutter my way over. So here's the flight pad. Let's go ahead and use it. Go in the first person so I can easily see where I'm flying and just mash the A button as much as we can just to get to the very top. And there's our final egg, so let's come in for a landing. See if we can land right on top of the egg. Ah, so close. Let's go ahead and hatch our final egg. Yikes! She's a big girl, isn't she? Too ripe. She can't even fly. Hmm. I'm not sure if there'd be room in our nest. You couldn't just hit it with one of those grenade eggs, could you? You heartless. Only joking. Bring her back to me. And I'll work out an exercise program for her. I'll just go and find Banjo then. Hey Banjo, can you please do something about that thing? I can't carry that giant bird. Luckily for us, we're right next to this big old dinosaur, so we can just go ahead and swap to Banjo immediately and put her into our backpack. There you go. Let's go ahead and take this baby back to Terry, which once again, conveniently for us, is right next to where we're at. This is why I recommend getting this egg as your final one. The fourth child will always be too big. So make sure that you leave your final egg to hatch to be this one right next to Terry. Because all you gotta do is put the child into your backpack and just go straight to Terry's nest. You don't have to worry about warping up here and climbing up the mountain. You can just walk straight in. That's the last one. Thank goodness, Kazooie won't want to see another egg for the rest of the game. You see, at her half your reward, as promised. Well, there you go. That's another jiggy. If I want to grab this, and that's 50. That's a pretty big number. So, I could walk all the way back to Kazooie, but I'm lazy. Time to fall through the mountain. It's a little weird, but yeah, you could do that. Uh -huh. Let's just go ahead and like take our two back together here. And at this point, we're nearing the end, so let's go ahead and see what we need. So if we go into our totals here, as you can see, we have everything but one of the Cheeto pages and eight out of the 10 Jiggies, which we know exactly how to get that other Jiggy. So let's just jump down from here and Luckily for us landing in the water, if I landed on that little bridge we made, that would have been a world of hurt. We definitely didn't want to land on solid ground. Let's get out of this cave. I know exactly what we need to do for our last couple of things, so at this point, there's really not much left for us to do. So, first things first, want to go ahead and grab ourselves some running shoes here. And let's make our way all the way over into this section of Pterodactyl Land because now we're going to go ahead and use those split-up pads to separate Banjo-Kazooie once more. This world definitely has you use the split-up pads quite often. 
And depending on how you route things out, you could be using these things a lot more or a lot less than I am. It really just depends on where you go first. But this will be our final time separating the two, so it won't be too bad after this. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these two, swap back over to Kazooie, and we'll just go ahead and use Kazooie here first because I need to go ahead and use that flight pad for one more thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and just use Kazooie alone for this. doesn't matter which one of the two you do use for this. I just actually am going to do this more for a quick warp back. It's just going to save us on some walking. So I'm going to go ahead and fly all the way over here. And we're going to go fly right down into this tiny little hole. It's going to be a little hard to do, so I definitely recommend you hold down the bumpers here. Or if you're playing the N64, hold down the R button and do some quick turns. So I'm going to fly down into this hole. And I want to continue flying because in here is a Cheeto page. And the reason why I want to continue flying is the only way we can easily get this right now is to fly into it. This is a really hard Cheeto page to get from just jumping. So I just recommend flying into here just to make things a little bit easier. And then we'll just fly right on out. And actually, let's just land right here and see what this area is all about. Ugh. So thirsty. I need water badly. Why not go and look for some then? It's not going to just drop out of the sky. Sun burns, poor Dippy. So I must stay in my cave. Please get me a drink. Poor Dippy. He can't even leave his home if he wanted to because it'll just burn. That's sad. We'll definitely have to help out Dippy, but... We can't help him right now, unfortunately. There's no real way for us to actually give him water in our first visit to Pterodactyl Land, so we'll have to remember that for later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and swap back over to the Stomping Plains just so I can swap over the Banjo. That was a little bit of a roundabout way just to get Banjo to go ahead and be our next playable character, but it works out. I didn't have to walk all the way back over here. I was just being efficient. I want to be Banjo by himself because I want to go ahead and make my way onto this tiny little ledge and enter our cave of six small and missing dinosaurs. Very interesting cave. There's one more thing we need to do for a Sterosaurus family, and that is to heal the sick one. So, we can't do anything with the sick one in this world. We were told about a shaman on the cliff plateau that could help, so let's just shove the sick one in our backpack. I have to sterilize this before Kazooie can actually go back in here, but it'll be fine. Gonna go ahead and take some damage here intentionally because after we do our thing here with this dinosaur, I'm gonna go ahead and do a death warp just to put the two back together. It make things a lot easier than just to walk all the way around this world to go get Kazooie. I can just go ahead and death warp to get Kazooie back with me. So, at this point, we just want to go ahead, call the train, which luckily we already did. It's here in the train station. And we want to bring our sick little dinosaur inside of the train because we need to go ahead and take this back to the Isle of Hags. There is nothing that Mumbo can do in this world for our dinosaur, but there is a Mumbo hut in the Isle of Hags that we can use that will heal this dinosaur. It's a little weird, but we'll get it done. Uh, it's still feeling rather rough. Is this train going to a doctor? Oh, yes, it is, but I'm trying to see if I can read this sign. I want to read the sign. No, the sign. Read the sign. Can I not read the sign with the dinosaur here now? I think it's impossible to read the sign with the dinosaur here. That is weird. Don't know why you can't read that sign. That is so weird. So, you don't have to do what I'm doing, because luckily, if you wanted to swap back over to Kazooie and then bring her back over here to Merge Boot Banjo, you could do that. It's going to take a bit for Kazooie to come back here, so uh, we'll just reunite the two in a different way. Hey, Kazooie. How you doing? Thank you for coming all the way back down the mountain. Now let's make our way over to that train. So at this point, we've done everything that we can do in Pterodactyl Land. There is not a single thing left for us to do in this world. So, let's just go ahead and take that sick dinosaur with us and take the train back to the Isle Hags. 
we haven't really used the train to actually go in between worlds just yet, so we might as well actually do it for once. So let's go ahead and select the Isle of Hags here as our destination, and let's get out of here. We luckily opened up this warp when we were on our way over the Jolly Roger Lagoon, so we can easily just get out of here. I like how those two dinosaurs there on the corner are just following each other. Just going in a straight line. That's really weird. They don't normally do that. Here we are, we're at the cliff top here now of Hags. And as you can see, right outside, there is a mumbo platform we can go ahead and use. So, now you see what it's for. The train's right in front of the mumbo pad, so mumbo interacts with the train. And it's pretty much only just for healing, because we were told in Pterodactyl Land that the shaman here on the cliff top can heal sick. So we need to bring the child outside of Pterodactyl Land to go ahead and cure of her illness. But we don't have ourselves a Globo, so you may be thinking, how can we do anything with Mumbo here when we don't even have a way to actually pay him for his service? Well, we can go ahead and get one real quick, because if we come down here, there is this switch. Activating this switch, we'll go ahead and make a bridge appear over into this temple area. To jump ahead a bit, this is actually World 7 that we're gaining access to right now. I don't know if we actually have enough jiggies to open the way for it just yet or not, but it doesn't really matter if you do because we're not going in here for quite a while. The reason why we're activating this bridge is because we want to go ahead and make our way into the back area here and climb up these vines because up here is a globo. So we want to grab this globo because we need to go ahead and pay Mumbo for services. And conveniently for us, a globo is right next to his hut. So, we didn't have to go far to get this Globo. Alternatively, you don't need to grab that Globo if you still have one in your inventory. So, if you didn't use, say, a Mumbo or a Wubba Wibwam in one of the previous worlds, and you still had a glow box oh. from one of the previous worlds, you can technically use that here. But, if you don't have a Globo like me, then grab the one here in the clifftop area. Welcome again, Baron Bird. We got a Globo. Let's give Magic Creature the Mumbo if want help. Want Mumbo's help? Of course we do. We always need your help. Sure, we need all the help we can get. Throw it in Mumbo's bag. Mumbo, you're cheering now, but your use is gonna be over in like a minute. Your use is very short-lived here, because it's very similar to his use in Jolly Roger Lagoon. We literally just walk over to one area, use the mumble pad for like one minute, and then he goes back home. This is his only use here in Owl Hacks. Might as well just get out of the way. Now it's time for the heal spell. This is just to heal one sick dinosaur, but this is the whole reason why we need to take that dinosaur weapon to Cliff Top. So, it's time to heal a little child. There you go, that child looks very happy. So, dinosaur is all healed and Mumbo is done. Time to take him home. That was his only use here in the Isle of Hags. Kinda sad that some of Mumbo's uses are just do this one thing and go home. That's pretty much his only purpose in life, it's just to do one quick thing and then he can take a nap. And this one really felt quick because he was just walking right outside. Kinda like the Jolly Roger Lagoon thing. Just walk right outside your house and then turn right back around. But that's done. So let's go ahead and make way back over to the train, and let's just go ahead and use it and go straight back to Pterodactyl Land. We could technically do this later because we'd waited quite a while to return the child from Witchy World, but might as well get this one done because this family has suffered long enough. It's time to reunite all the kids back to the mother, and this time all of them in good health, good size, and they're not kidnapped and being slaved at a carnival. They're all back home and safe and sound. So, Let's go ahead and finish this up. No. 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 
Rah! I feel real healthy now, so I'm going to run all the way home. I can't thank you enough. Please accept this shiny thing I acquired when I trot out one of those ugga boogas. We worked really hard for you. Any chance of another jiggy? No. Fair enough. Yeah, so all that hard work, having to take two of the kids in between worlds and growing a third one back to size gives you one jiggy. That's a lot of work just for a single jiggy. I can see why Kazooie asked for more because that was a lot. What does the sign say? I need to know. Find the train, tunnel, door switches, and other worlds to enable Chuffy to travel between stations. So that just told me something I already knew. Great. I did all that hard work trying to read that sign earlier for something we already knew because we've been doing what that sign says for quite some time. Well, at least now we know what it says. So at this point, we have done everything we can in Pterodactyl Land. We are all done with this world. There's still one more Jiggy we can't get just yet, but that's because we can't help Dippy. We need to get him some water, and it's not, unfortunately, available to us right now. So let's go ahead and check our totals real quick before we leave. So going down to the total screen, as you can see, we have everything but one Jiggy. So I say we're doing pretty good. Now let's just go ahead and leave here, because at this point, there's nothing else we can do. It's time for us to get back out into the wasteland area in Isle of Hags because here we want to go ahead and just explore real quick because in this corner we got ourselves some spring shoes and we need these spring shoes to continue exploring the area so luckily for us we learned how to use these in the previous world. So let's just jump up to here and enter this cave following more of the trail. And here we are. We're in the quagmire area of the Isle of Hags and here in particular we got another silo we want to activate. And we got an area that's called Grunty Industries off to the side. And if we look over here onto our right, as we can see, these, this trail just circles the entire area. But if we go into first person mode, we can see the trail climbs all the way up. So at this point, we're nearing the end of where that trail is. So it's going to be a little bit harder for us to follow Grunty at this point because we can't climb walls. That's kind of impossible for us right now. So... At this point, we can really just explore what's on the ground level. And as we can see, Grundy Industries says no entry. So we'll have to bust through that door to get into our next area. But before we do that, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a quick Jinjo here. Climb onto the side of Grundy Industries here. Luckily for us, there's a lot of barrels. And on top of this roof, let's get ourselves a Jinjo. Oh, sorry, fooled you. It's a Minjo. It's not really helpful at all. Thanks, buddy. So, yeah, that's a faker. Good way to end things, huh? We're getting near the end of the areas, and they just want to throw something like that at you. They, they knew what they were doing. As you can see, this area is very bleak looking, which definitely makes sense for an industry area. So, at this point, this is our next stop and our next world to explore. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, We'll go ahead and enter our next world of the game, Grunty Industries. I'll see you guys next time.